Good morning, friends. A very warm welcome to our 8.30 worship service. Today is the 1st of October, the first day of the last quarter of the year. So the year has flown by very quickly. However it has gone for you, I pray that you have felt the presence of the Lord with you. And uh, today we come and ask that we unite our hearts as we worship Him together. Let us rise and join together in our call to worship. We've gathered together in the presence of God. We come before God with confidence. Praying in us and for us, giving shape to our wordless hopes and longings. So let's come with joy to offer our worship to God who knows us all. Amen. Our opening song, Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lord, I stand in the midst of the multitude of those from every tribe and tongue. We are your people redeemed by your blood, rescued from death by your love. There are no words good enough to thank you. There are no words to express my praise. But I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. grace in your presence we are your people redeemed by your blood rescued from the death by your love there are no words good enough to thank you there are no words to express my praise, but I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my heart. Strength. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Lord, we stand by grace. Lord, we stand by grace in your presence. Second verse. Cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Let's try that again. Shall we try from the beginning? Lord, I stand in the midst of the multitude of those from every tribe and tongue. We are your people, redeemed by your blood, rescued from death by your love. There are no words good enough to thank you. There are no words to express my praise. But I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Lord, we stand by grace in your presence. Your children, keep by your name, humbly we bow and we pray. Release your power, release your power to work in us and through us till we are changed to be more like you. Then all the nations, then all the nations will see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spring. But holy trust in Jesus' name When darkness seems to hide His face I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. His oath is come. And his blood support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gives way. He then is all my hope and stay, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same. shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. Faultless stand before the throne, Christ alone. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong. 
the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Will you please be seated? Let us come quietly before our Lord, Christ who is alone, our cornerstone. Lord, be our vision and our wisdom, O Lord of our heart. Let us join together in the prayer hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Lord, you are still our vision. You are still everything in our heart, the heart of our own heart. You know what's in our heart, and we should also know what is in your heart. And Lord, you want us to know your heart. You want us to know your vision. You want us to know what you have given for us. Every single one of us here. You love us. You love us. And you want us to, have, to be with you. Not just, not just in words, but to fulfill your vision, to fulfill your will, to fulfill your power, to fulfill what you have done in us. You know, I, I, I was just pondering and preparing and 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 5 to 7, you know, was a story about the disciples of Elisha wanting to build a bigger, a bigger school, a bigger house, a bigger discipleship place, you know, by the Jordan River for Elisha. And so because more and more were coming. And while the disciples was cutting you know, they borrowed an axe and was cutting down the trees to build a bigger place for Elisha to have this discipleship place, this Bible school. And what happened is this, that the axe head fell into the water. And when the axe head fell in the water, you know, they asked Elisha, you know, what to do? And Elisha tell him, cut a piece of wood like exactly the same like that of the, of the axe stick, you know, the stick of the axe, throw it in the water and the axe head would float up. You know, this is such a miracle. You know, there's no way that, that the wood is going to sink right down into the water. You know, to, and there's no way that, 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 that the wood is, the handle of the, of the axe is going to lodge into the axe head. And there's no way that it's going to float up. But that is what Elisha, that's what Elisha gave the order. You know, that's what Elisha told his disciples to do. Throw the handle, cut the handle and then throw it into the water and the axe head floated up and they say, grab it! He said, grab it! I felt the Lord is saying this to, to someone here. Miracles happen. When you dare to have fulfill God's vision in your life, when you dare to fulfill God's plan in your life, miracles will happen. When you dare to take that step forward to know His heart, to accept and receive his vision, his vision to expand, his vision to fulfill, his vision is for God. You know, it's, it's for God's plan. He's going to raise up the ex head for you. Miracles will happen. And that's what I felt the Lord is saying to someone here. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. It's a beautiful story. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for this is given to someone here. That Lord truly may that person take courage to fulfill the vision that you have given to them. May that person, Lord, take courage to know that your plans are big, but he's not going to be left alone. He or she is not going to be left alone because, Lord, your miracles will be fulfilled through this person. Your great miracles will be fulfilled through this person. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's another person, you know, you've been going through highs, you've been going through lows, you know, you're probably in the, in the low part of your life right now. You feel that everything is, is not falling in place. You know, everything is falling out of place. But I saw, I saw a zip, you know, a zip, a zip, zipping up your high and a low. It is Jesus who will bind everything together. It is Jesus who is going to draw all things together to Him. You know, I saw this zip and the hand, hand just pulling up the zip bring it all together only God can bring everything together sometimes we, th we see things as high and, and, as, and as low but God is God will bring all things together because to see Him there's no high there's no low actually but God will bring all things together to see Him because He is all we need and He is all we need to have just remember, let him hold the handle and let him bring all things together. He will bring all things together. You will come to a conclusion. And the conclusion is in him. No one else. That conclusion is in him. Um, 
I saw something else earlier, but I, I didn't really fully understand. I saw, you know, in, in other countries, the power line is, on, is placed on, you know, like a lamppost in a way. Like there are many posts. And you are one of those posts where the power line, your cap is, 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 is hung on. And I felt that, I felt, I felt, I felt the Lord is saying this to you. Don't, don't think that you are just a post holding the power line. Without that one post, there'll be no power. You are an important part in carrying the power through. And I felt that this is what the Lord is saying to you. Don't think that you are nothing. Don't think that you are unimportant. You are just a post. No. You are an important post because you are transmitting the power. People have to go through you. Things have to go through you. Whatever you are doing is important. Very important. Whatever you are doing is crucial. Don't think that you are just a post. You are part of an important plan of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I just want to pray for healing for some of you here. I, I just preparing. And there's someone here, you know, you have something regarding your ear loop. You know, somewhere around your ears, it's, it's, there's some infection or, the, or there's something that's going on, on your, just on outside of the ear. If you, are, if you are that person, if you just open your palms or can place your hands on where your ear is and let us pray together. Lord Jesus, Lord, I want to pray and pronounce your healing upon this person. That Lord, that there is no more infection, no more pain. There be no more disruption, you know, cause. I pray in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, that you heal this person. Let the pain go away now. Let there be no more ringing, no more, no, no more soreness. But truly let your comfort, your hand, bring down everything, the swelling and so on. Thank you, Lord. There's another person who will be having stomach issues and in fact, I think you have gone for, you have gone for MRI and so on. I, 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 I believe that you fear, you fear the results to be bad and so on. But if you had a person regarding the stomach area, just lay hands on where, the, where your stomach is. And let's pray together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I ask and pronounce the Lord and proclaim your name. Your name has power and authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let there truly be healing. In the name of Jesus, dear Lord, we know, dear Lord, you are our great healer. You are our great healer. And because, dear Lord, that you have revealed, you have revealed this, I pray, dear Lord, that may your hand truly show your power. May a miracle happen, dear Lord, through you. Because you are Jesus. You are Jesus. Let there be no, let this, this, this stomach, you know, issue be no longer an issue. But truly, Lord, may you bring a miracle through your power of your healing, Lord, to this person. Let it be a wonderful testimony, Lord, a great testimony to be shared of your greatness and your power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to also pray for the world. We know that there's been burning and there's been bomb blasts, you know, in, in Pakistan and in some parts of the world. We want to pray, dear Lord, that let there truly be your peace. May your loving peace dwell in the hearts of people. May your loving peace truly dwells, dwells in the world. Lord, when you come, you bring peace. And I know, dear Lord, that you are peace because you are peace. May, because peace can only come from you. The permanent peace can only come from you. So truly, Lord, may you, may you be the peace of the world, Lord. Pray for PMC, our church, our wonderful church, the church that we so love. Pray, Lord, that your will is to prosper, PMC. And may we trust in you and follow your vision. Your vision, Lord, for this church to grow to a strength that we know that is not done by men, but it's done by you. Your will for PMC to grow to a spirituality that is that no man can do, but through your Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, Lord, come, come and fall upon us. Holy Spirit, come, Lord, come, come and dwell upon us. 
You know, during the corporate prayer just on Wednesday last week, we had a wonderful time. Holy Spirit came and we were just worshipping and worshipping and worshipping. It was just so powerful. God has a vision for PMC. And may the vision be fulfilled through His power by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I thank you, dear Lord, for what you are doing here in PMC. And may you continue to fulfill your vision here in PMC, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we pray all this and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Paulin. Indeed, we serve a, a great and mighty God. Good morning, church. So good to see all of us here uh, today. Just have uh, one announcement for us before we welcome uh, and we extend the greetings to one another. Uh, the announcement is on your bulletin in item number three, and it's with regards to the men's ministry. So we're calling all men, and we're building a community of, of, of men to come together to support one another. And this is uh, a second in the series of meeting up. And so it's going to start from this Saturday onward 7th of October all the way till the 18th of uh, November. All right, and so we just want to let you know that this is going on uh, this coming Saturday. And um, if you do know of anyone or if you yourself would be interested and keen to be part of this uh, community, please do sign up and the sign up details are over there in the bulletin. All right, and so that is all the announcements that we have for you this morning and the rest of the, the details in the bulletin we leave it to your reading and your prayerful participation at this point we want to welcome those of us who are here for the first time or the first few times so i when i stand here i realize my voice is very loud but i realize that we have a new sound system very wonderful so i believe all of you can hear me if you are here for the first time uh you know please raise your hand and we will and the, and the ushers will be uh, you know will be happy to pass you a little package for our church all right, so, so don't be shy, just starting from the left-hand side here. If that's you, would you raise your hands? Uh, and we will come to you shortly and pass you a package, okay? Um, just sweeping across all the way to the right-hand side. Is there anyone here for the first time or the first few times? If not, shall we stand? I think we're among family and friends. Shall we stand and let's greet one another and pass the peace of the Lord to each other? As we continue in our worship to God, we're going to give to Him uh, His tithes and our offerings. So there are two ways you can give. You can either scan the QR code on the screen, or there should be a QR code in front of you in the pews. Or if you so wish, you can come along the aisles and drop your offering there. Shall we go to God in prayer as we give to Him? Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come before you, remind us that we give to a God who is in control, a God who is loving, and a God who is sovereign. Remind us also, Lord, that you have provided for us so much, Lord, and may we give with a heart of gratitude. May you use these gifts for the extension of your kingdom and your glory. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, church, let us give to the Lord.
come church, shall we stand and let us sing the doxologies together? Praise God from Good morning, church. Hello. Am I a bit loud? Or is just my feedback mo monitor? Am I, am I a bit loud? No. Sorry, so it's just here. Well, we are in a season in which we are allowing the speaker to wait on God as to what, what they should speak. So this, this season is a season of free topic, all right, for, the, for those of us who are speaking. And next week is uh, Laity Sunday, and I have asked um, Denise Poir, the mayor, to come and bring God's uh, word. At the same time, next week, we will be having stalls outside uh, to sell tickets for the Purple Parade. Some of you, you are familiar with the Purple Parade. The Purple Parade is to celebrate the abilities of those who are those who are challenged in some uh, some ways but you know they can still do their contribution to society and next week uh, there'll be the purple parade stalls that will come and sell their tickets at the same time for those of us who like to give uh, but you are not able to to go you can get the tickets and you can just uh, drop it into a box in which we will, we will uh, give to those, those that we are helping in the community that they can also go and be, uh, uh, be blessed by the Purple Parade. All right, so that's next week. All right, and today we will, I sense that I should speak on this topic, whether to be a doormat, right? Uh, Sorry, I just let me just uh, elaborate further on the free, on the free topics uh, until the end of October. Okay, from the end of October, we will talk about how to hear God's voice, right? But from now until uh, the twenty second of October, we will be having a period of free topics with, in which the speaker will wait on God to see whatever God wants to wants them to share come let's go to the Lord in prayer spirit of the living God you come you fall afresh upon all of us keep our eyes and our thoughts on the Lord Jesus Christ so Holy Spirit you come be glorified be exalted be magnified and our Lord I pray that whatever we do, we do to your glory. So, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation in all our hearts be, accept, be acceptable to you, our God and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the last few months, in a land not so far away, I just do not like, I, at this point, I do not want to just say uh, which, which country it is, but there have been reports of 
many churches that are being burned down. It is something that has grief. I believe the heart of our heavenly Father that has impacted many of us who are connected with people in that land. And not only are churches being, being burnt, right? You have also Christians who are being badly persecuted for their faith. And there has been reports of two, two Christian women who were paraded naked in the streets in this state. Okay? In this place. And they were told, if you don't take off your clothes, we will kill you. It is something that is said. And in that, in that country, okay, of a number of states, the pastors have asked themselves, what should we do? What do we do in such a situation? And so the pastors and the, some members of the state organized a massive rally and their cry was stop attacking churches. Stop attacking churches. And when the pastors did that, you know, there were lots of people who did, who just started criticizing them. They criticized, criticized, criticized. And what did they say? They say, you know, that's not Christian. To, to have a rally is not Christian. Christian must turn the other cheek. You are being persecuted, you turn the other cheek. You must suffer in silence. Is that what Christians should do? What did Jesus teach? What did Jesus teach if we are in such a situation? Remember that Jesus lived in a time in which he... They, Israel was under oppression under the Romans. So everything Jesus taught, they would, there would be Romans there waiting for him to say the wrong things. And when the Gospels were written, more so when it is done by Matthew, okay? Because Matthew is a very precise person. Matthew, remember, he is a tax collector. And all those who does a lot of accounting, tax, you know, tax, uh, what do you call it, the tax people, they are all very detailed people. Okay? And so when they say something, it will be, there is a reason why he say certain things okay and Matthew was written mainly to the Jews living in Israel and so his his writing would contain things which he may not be free to openly say but it will be there in his writing so what did Jesus teach okay Let's go to a very familiar passage. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 39 to 41, okay? But I tell you, Jesus said this, but I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, Go with him two more. Okay? And from this passage alone, there have been teachings that say, okay, you just suffer in silence. Okay? You be a doormat, you know. Somebody, you know, hit you, persecute you. You tell them, hit me more, hit me more. But is that what is really being taught? 
And a Methodist scholar, Walter Wing, you know, in his book, The Powers That Be, plus, plus, plus other, other books, he, he gave a perspective, a background that many of us have never considered. So let's look at the first one. Matthew chapter 5, from verse, from verse 39. Do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Okay? Note, this is what Matthew said. If anyone's... Okay, Matthew is a precise person, like what I tell you. No, because he's a tax collector, okay? So he's, he's accounting his, his details, okay? is quite immaculate. So he says there, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them also the other cheek, okay? We live in a right-handed world. How many of you are right-handers? Just raise your hand, wave at me. Oh, a lot, huh? Who are the left handers? Huh? Very few, uh, a few left handers. All right? Okay, you ask me, I'm, I'm not very sure. <laughs> I write with my right hand, but most things I am quite dominant on my, on my left hand, all right? People who see me carry babies during baptism, they say I'm a left hander. <laughs> Okay? But whatever it is, we live in a right-handed world. Correct? Most things are made for the right-handers. Okay. How does a right-handed person slap another person on the right cheek? Remember, Matthew did not say on the, on a, you know, slap you on the cheek, but he says on the right cheek, you offer the other cheek also. Okay? If you're seated next to uh, your spouse or someone you're very familiar with, practice. <laughs> try it out, try it out. Seriously, seriously. How do you slap a right... How do you, a right-hander, slap another person on the right cheek? Try out, try out. <laughs> try out. How? How? How can you slap... Okay, this is, okay, because Matthew was precise, he says a right, on the right cheek, right? He didn't say on the cheek. He says, okay, Matthew says that, okay, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. So, hey, what happened? Ah, yeah, I shouldn't show that. Ah. But go and practice. How? How does a right-handed person, right-handed person slap another person on the right cheek? Huh? You have to do the back slap. Correct? There is no way you can like that. <laughs> if you are angry, you have to do the back slap. Okay? That is one way that you slap, you are right-hander, you slap the person on the right cheek. What is another way? Huh? Use your left hand. Okay, the left hand slap. But one thing you need to take note of, even today, the right hand, the back slap is a slap of insult, right? You do that only to, to someone you feel is much, much lower than you. Both are slaps of insult. The left hand slap and the back slap. Okay? The left hand, until today, in most culture, that eats with their hand, you never eat with your left hand. Why? The left hand is used for, huh? the left hand is supposed to be unclean, right? It's used to wipe all sorts of things, including parts of the body that cannot be mentioned, right? <laughs> Correct? Because that's the use of the left hand, okay? That's why 
you go to especially to our neighboring countries and so on to Indonesia to India to everywhere you don't offer your left hand okay you want to pray for somebody you don't pray you don't put your left hand on someone to to pray over the person using your left hand because your left hand is unclean it's supposed to be I mean it's unclean you use your right hand because the right hand is the is the hand in which you 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 do you know things of honor and so on never with your left hand because the left hand is used for wiping and so both are slaps of insult the back slap and the left hand slap and so Matthew was precise about the right cheek and so he is saying this if you slap me slap me as an equal use your correct hand I offer you the other cheek I'm not going to let you ins you know treat me as an undignified person I will turn the other cheek for you so that if you disagree with me you disagree with me as an equal I'm a human being treat me with dignity and respect I made in the image of God and in the image of God you treat me with dignity never with that back slap or you use your unclean hand to slap me because you must not forget that this is a culture where they eat a lot with their hands and so on they know which hand is good which hand is not good I am made in the image of God you want to disagree with me you disagree with me as a human being as an equal don't do this because that's not meant for me as an equal next if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic let him have your cloak as well which one is the cloak which one is the tunic cloak is which one huh the outer one right the tunic is the inside right correct the cloak is the outer wear for keeping warm the tunic is the inner wear if you sue me for my tunic for my clothes inside <laughs> I must be so poor for you to have to sue me for my tunic because if you want to sue somebody you want to you want to take his underwear or you want to take his coat <laughs> the reason for this suing has usually has to do with you know being in debt and you know I want to take I, I want to take back what I've loaned you or whatever but if you sue me for my tunic for my inner wear I'm already so poor that you have to sue me for my inner wear you might as well have everything <laughs> okay what's the point oh sorry not what's the point of my cloak oh, yeah, correct what's the point of my cloak without my inner inner clothes <laughs> I might as well be naked you want to take my inside yeah you 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 want to take my my inner clothes now nah, you can have everything it is to show the injustice of the whole situation correct if you see a rich person going to a poor person and say okay give me your shirt give me your you know your whatever you are you you are wearing maybe your outer cloak can can cover for a while but it will look terrible terribly in I mean unjust for somebody to sue you and take away all your clothes 
So it was, if you sue me for my inner clothes, you might as well have everything. Because the cloak will not be able to, to cover much of my nakedness. It was, you want? Take on and let others see the injustice. Yes, I may owe you, but I'm already so desperate that I have nothing else for you to sue for. Now you're suing for even my, the clothes on my back. Next, if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. In what situation is this in which, you know, people will want to force you to go one mile with them? There must be a context to this whole thing. And what's that context? That context is, has to to do with the Romans ruling over Israel at that time. You know, the Roman soldiers all have, you know, a heavy, heavy, their own version of backpack, okay? Uh, the guys who go through NS, you will know, you know, your, what you have to carry. You know, and for them, you know, remember this was a time before vehicles were invented, everything was on foot. You have to march thousands of miles. You have to march miles with your heavy, you know, heavy utensils, you know. And in those days, you, you don't have all the disposable light things. Everything was made of metal, heavy, that you have to carry, okay? They have to carry all this. And so, there was a ruling in the Roman army that, you know, is legal for the soldiers to force someone to carry their pack, their backpack, but only for one month. Only for one month. Anything be, you are not allowed to go through more than one mile. They can force people to carry a load, but at most for one mile. And you will remember also in, you know, when Jesus was carrying the cross, when he couldn't carry it anymore, he stumbled. The Roman soldiers just got Simon of Cyprus to just carry. You are allowed to force anyone to carry the load, but for one mile. And so, when you go the second mile, what will happen? What will happen if you go the second mile? You are forcing. You are making the soldier break his own laws. And very soon, you know, as he goes further, as you carry him off further, you are, he is breaking the law, his own law now. And he may very soon, please, 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 give me back, give me back, give me back. Please don't go any further. I will get into trouble. Go that second mile, yes. Why am I saying all these things now? Remember this, that Jesus is coming back soon. And in the last days, there will be persecution. We are living in the last days. Maybe we are not seeing this right now. But if you read enough in the news, you will know that the persecution against righteousness is starting to increase. There will be more and more laws that will be that is unjust. I'm sure you have read in the, I do not know whether all of you have read, but you know, in the UK, in recent months, someone was standing outside an abortion clinic he didn't say anything, he did not do anything, I mean, he did not protest or what, but he got arrested because they said that, you know, in his mind, he was praying. It was even wrong to pray 
If you have not read this incident, you can go to the. You, I mean, when you go home, not now. If you go, when you go home, go and go and Google about about people being arrested for praying in their minds. Things are getting worse. Singapore, we may not be facing it right now. But if you see the trend, it may not be long. We are smack in the middle of the global economy. And if the word of God, I won't say if the good word of God, when the word of God comes to pass in which during the time of tribulation, during the time in which you have to receive the mark of the beast. I don't believe it is a fable. I believe that it is coming to pass. It will come to pass only when. And when that time comes, what do you do? We have to start thinking and talking perhaps about it what should we do when you know we become hated matthew 10 verse 22 you'll be hated by everyone because of my name but the one who perseveres to the end will be safe people of god that day is coming soon the day is coming soon when it becomes wrong to even Say something according to the word of God. Where keeping true to the word of God may cost you persecution. And don't think that just because we are in Singapore, we don't see it now, it will not come to pass. If you tell the people in the U.S., maybe 50 years ago that the day will come in which to stand up for the faith you are going to be persecuted or you tell the people in the uk that the day will come in which you you cannot even pray in your mind you get arrested they will not believe you And there's no guarantee it will not happen to Singapore. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 to 14 says this, Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, because, and because evil shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Look around you, even within your family, you find the love for God is waxing cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So all this about us being afflicted, will come to pass first before the end comes. And I believe that Jesus is coming soon. And so what is Jesus teaching? That, you know, when I'm wrong, hit me some more, hit me some more. Is that what Jesus is, is, is teaching? I believe this is, Jesus is teaching us that in our resistance, not that it's wrong to resist evil, but in our res- resistance to evil, it has to be non-violent. Turn the other cheek means to resist evil, to resist the powers non-violently, just as Jesus did. Remember, we are not a doormat to be trampled upon by everyone. Sometimes we, uh, some, some Christians have the mistaken belief that, you know, you just suffer in silence, pray, pray, pray. 
Nothing wrong with praying. Nothing wrong with praying, but there are things that we can do to resist evil. Jesus is not talking about being violent in our resistance. And many times, in resistance, when you resist, the powers that be, the powerful ones, will tell you that, you know, everyone must be the same. Don't stick out. Submit, submit. For the sake of peace and unity, submit, submit. The scary thing is that Germany, in about 70, 80 years ago, was able to exterminate 6 million Jews. Not only 6 million Jews, but also many minority people, including those who are disabled those who were seen to be less than perfect. Hitler was able to do that in a Christian nation. Germany was not a barbaric nation then. Hitler was able to do that. There were professors, great thinkers, Great theologians, in fact, those of us who study theology you will know that, you know, Germany has produced great, a great number of theologians, influential theologians, many doctors, many engineers, many scientists. It was a Christian nation. But yet, the Holocaust happened. And you know that the Holocaust could not have happened without the cooperation of these intellectuals. You need engineers to design the gas chambers, right? Hitler is not an engineer. There's no way he can do it by himself. So you need the engineers. You need the builders to build it up, the architects. You need the lawyers. The lawyers, what did the lawyers do? The lawyers helped to draft laws in which it became legal to do that. And not only that, the lawyers also drafted laws that after they get killed, that their estate goes to the state. You need also theologians and pastors who will not speak the truth in order to ensure that Hitler will not come after them. They excuse away whatever he did. They formed theologies to ensure that whatever Hitler did, like the lawyers, the lawyers legalized it legally. There were many pastors who theologized to make it okay for Hitler to kill the Jews. They quoted scriptures that when the Jews crucified Christ, they say, let this sin be upon us and our children. And so based on that, they call the Jews the Christ killers. And therefore, it became okay to kill them. It is a scary thing and a sad thing when the whole nation cooperated in the killing 
the exterminating of not only the Jews, but millions of other people. Jews alone, six million. There are other groups that have were exterminated. And church, I do not know whether such a day will come. But when that day comes, I pray that some of us will dare to stand up and say that's wrong. Because in order to ensure conformity, they will tell you this, submit, submit. Must submit to your leaders. Bible says must submit to your leaders. But submission is not blind obedience. When the word of God is being violated, your conscience, which is from God, when it speaks against it, you must have the courage to say that it is wrong. It has been said that evil happens not because of evil men. Evil takes place when good men, good women do nothing. Evil does not happen because of evil people. Evil happens because good people do nothing. They see the evil but they look away. They see the evil and they don't do anything. They allow the evil to persist. Sometimes we call it submission, submission. But submission cannot, is not blind obedience. When, you, when there is evil, when there is wrong things, we must have the courage to say that's wrong. Sometimes they say for the peace, for the peace of the group, for the unity of the country, don't do it. But if there is evil, if there is wrongdoing, there must be courage. Look at the prophets. Look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. They spoke the truth knowing that they will, of, they will be offending the powerful. And many of them paid with their, with their lives. Many of them get, you know, badly persecuted. You read throughout history. You, you read also about the Reformation, where people tolerated the evil. They know that there are certain right things, but then, because the powerful says that you cannot do it, Hitler was able to do what he did, not because of himself and his small group of people, how many? Maybe 10, 15, 20. And you have a nation of millions who did not dare to stand up. The fact that Jesus was crucified, the fact that many prophets were, were persecuted and killed was because they know that when there is evil, they will speak. Of course, they disrupted the peace and unity of the group for that time. But for the greater good, they spoke and they got killed and persecuted. Another question I want to deal with is, what did Jesus do when he was treated unfairly? Because in his speaking, fourth, he was persecuted. The Pharisees, the, the chief priests, the priests, the Pharisees, all the establishment went against him. Why? 
because he spoke forth the truth. He was treated unfairly. What did Jesus do? Okay, I want us to look at this portion. What did Jesus do? John chapter 18, there's his trial at the, uh, with the priests, with the Sanhedrin. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet and in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he said this thing, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the priest like that? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? If I have spoken wrongly, show me where I've gone wrong. Show me. Bear witness of the evil. Where have I said things wrongly? But if I've spoken the truth, why do you strike me? First, note this, that Jesus did not resort to violence. Jesus did not physically hit back. He could have done that because most scholars believe that Jesus was well built. Not that he, he go to the gym, lah, huh? but because he was a carpenter. And as, as a carpenter, he will be using a lot of physical strength in his work. He'll be carrying the locks and so on and you know, doing lots of, lots of physical tasks. And he was probably strong and he could have hit back. But Jesus did not resort to physical violence. That's number one for us to take note. I don't believe that the Lord wants us to, you know, just, just enter violence. It was non, I mean, it was, uh, Jesus did not resort to physical violence just to hit back. But the second thing, when he, when he was slapped unfairly, he asked questions. Jesus answered him, if I have spoken evil, if I've spoken wrongly, Bear witness of the evil. Show me. Show me where I have, what I have said is wrong. But if well, if I have not spoken wrongly, why do you strike me? Why do you strike me if I have not spoken evil? If I have not spoken wrong, wrong things, why do you strike me? If I've spoken evil, then show me. And they could not answer. Next, also take note that Jesus walked away. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the cloud and went on his way. And there'll be times in which God says, walk away. Like what he taught his disciples, if they do not receive you, just shake off the dust. Shake the dust off your feet. It's to say, I don't want anything, I don't want to do anything more with you. I leave you to God's judgment. I leave you. And Jesus walked away. Jesus walked away. There will be times in which we say, God, I want to, out of my, I know I want to finish the fight. But God says, that's pride. Walk away because vengeance belongs to me. And Jesus walked away. He could have fought them because there will be people in that group, I believe, because he was in his hometown that he grew up with that may have stood with him. All that Jesus did was just read the scriptures, read to say that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It was a reading.
And so people of God, when you're going through tough times, difficult, unfair times, there'll be times in which you will have to know this. That it's okay to ask questions. There'll be times in which the Lord will tell you, do not resort to violence. Go and ask your questions. Do not resort to violence and there will be times which the Lord says, walk away. And then you walk away. When Jesus was treated unfairly, he did not resort to violence. But that does not mean he did not resist. Jesus asked questions. And Jesus also walked away the last part of his life you find that because he knew that the time has come that in which he needs to sacrifice his life he needed to die for the sins of the world he did not walk away but he walked through it and when he walked through it he knew god was with him when daniel was thrown into the lion's den. God did not deliver him from being thrown into the lion's den. God allowed him to be thrown into the lion's den. But God shut the mouth of the lions. When the friends of Daniel went through the fiery furnace, they were not delivered out of the furnace, but they were, they were delivered through the furnace. That King Nebuchadnezzar said, I saw a fourth man in the fire with them. And so, people of God, when you're going through tough times, when you feel hard pressed on every side, know this. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We are hard pressed on every time, every side, but not crushed God is deliverer God will shut the lion's mouth God will walk with you through the fiery furnace to protect you from the fire even though you are going through the fire perplex but do not despair but not in despair why? because you know God is with you Persecuted, but not abandoned. Because through that persecution, God is there. Struck down. You, yes, people may think that you are, you are being struck down, but you are not destroyed. Because greater is He that is in you than He that is of the world. So whatever situation you are in, take heart. Take heart. God is with you through the fiery furnace. God will be with you through the floods. God will be with you through the lion's den. Even though lions are around you, you find that the lions cannot open up their mouth because God has shut their mouths. And when that day of persecution comes to the world, and I know, I, I know that it will come because God's word is true. It's only a matter of when. When that day comes of tribulation, the time of tribulation, the time of persecution, what, is, what will happen to you? Look around the world. Look at all the disasters, the calamities, the wars and rumors of wars, the earthquakes, all the pestilence, all the pestilences that have struck the world. 
Surely, the end is coming soon. When the end comes, will you be able to say, I will stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ during the time of tribulation? Can you say, I will stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ when you, when you have to make the decision whether you will receive the mark of the beast? Will you have enough courage to say, I am willing to stand up for Jesus. I will stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you do that? Can I do that? I pray that by the grace of God, when that time comes, I will stand up and say, the Lord Jesus who gave his life for me, how can I deny him? How can I deny the one who gave his life for me? Let us pray. Lord, I pray that each one of us here, that the day will come in which we will stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ, keep our eyes focused on you and on you alone. So thank you, Lord. And Lord, be with us for this we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, let's stand for the closing song. Holy Communion. Those without the Holy Communion elements, just raise your hands. The ashes will bring them to you. Come, let's pause for a few moments of silence as we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. Come, let's begin. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from these, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, pour out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Make these gifts of consecrated bread and wine be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come, let's take out the bread. The Holy Communion is a sacrament and in the sacrament the grace of God is imparted. Let us thank God for all that Jesus has purchased for us at Calvary. For he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are all healed. So let's thank God for all that Jesus has done for us at Calvary and whatever grace you need to walk in wholeness, ask the Lord to release that. Whatever grace you need to walk in his healing, ask the Lord to release that in your life. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Take it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us open up the cup. The word of God also tells us the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for the forgiveness of sins. Let us thank God for his forgiveness. Let us thank God for his salvation. And whatever grace you need to walk in his forgiveness in ways that will please and honor him, ask the Lord to release. Really. 
Jesus said, This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for, for, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Teach us to honour you, to follow you, and Lord, when there is wrong, to stand up for Jesus. And now people of God, go and bring God's righteousness to all that you meet. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be and remain with you now and forevermore in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.